Hello, I'm Dan Winter. Thanks for inviting us to the Tesla Conference New York City. Thanks so much to Jason Matozo for help making this presentation. And sitting next to me is my wonderful Tesla Genius partner, uh, Bill Donovan. And we're going to be sharing with you a little bit about our projects with Implosion Group and FractalField.com. So we'll just get started right away because this is a very short presentation. Much of what we work with have to do with uh, what's called the flame in the mind, which is how longitudinal waves make compression. The various websites uh, relevant are goldenmean.info, theimploder.com, purify.com, heartsring.com, biofeedback, bloomthedesert.com, and breakthrough-technologies.com with Roger Green. So one of the essential issues here, uh, this earlier keynote is prepared for uh, on the sort of physics of consciousness, but it relates to Tesla concept in that the uh, nature of mind and consciousness is, in our, my opinion, effectively a centripetal wave, a phase conjugate implosive. And the nature of that centripetal forces is how you cohere the vacuum and uh, essence in many ways to Tesla. And that's what we're going to be discussing. Uh, naturally centripetal plasma containment and implosion devices that cohere the vacuum. One of the key issues to understand how these things work is to understand the difference between a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave. The transverse wave, as you can see on top, is basically like a slinky vibrating up and down, whereas a, a compressional or longitudinal wave on the bottom is a wave that's going along like a compressing slinky in a line. Uh, the difference between a tsunami and the ocean versus a tsunami that hits the shore. The tsunami in the ocean is longitudinal compressional, and the one that hits the shore is transverse. And Bill may probably have more to say about this, and he's going to speak also about the confusion between scalar waves and compressional longitudinal. So those are some of our cool little animations. And then if you see, uh, <clears throat> the way the compressional wave uh, achieves what's called phase conjugation, that's going to lead us to understanding how centripetal forces implosion and cohering the vacuum devices in general work. And we're going to be talking about how we uh, model this as the very nature of consciousness and life force also. So in general, uh, for example, when you talk about phase conjugation in optics, we think, or I think, the appropriate visualization is basically how pine cones kiss noses. And so if you visualize the approaching opposing lasers in a pump wave for phase conjugate optics, which is well documented to make negentropy, self-organization, centripetal forces, etc. So another way of seeing how those pine cones kiss noses, optimized by golden ratio, is the golden ratio wavelengths flames literally the flame in the mind, in this animation. So if you stellate that in the completed symmetry array, also golden ratio, you have the infinite interdigitation of the dodeca ecosa, the, we say, in my belief, the only possible true three-dimensional fractal. And later we present evidence that this is, in fact, the symmetry of hydrogen itself and DNA and lots of cool stuff. And the kit to put that together and try it for yourself, uh, the geometry modeling kit, uh, star mother kit, goldenmean.info slash kit. Now, when we look at that with respect to what happens in the nature of consciousness itself, in my pioneering work with my invention, the Bliss Tuner, goldenmean.info slash clinical intro, uh, you see that the right and left hemispheres of brainwave, EEG, in their power spectra, show he right here up to one, two, three, four, five harmonics, alpha to beta, etc., in golden mean ratio between the frequencies, meaning the brain waves are making golden mean ratio, and we're calling that peak perception, bliss, ecstasy, etc., which later you'll see our mathematics to prove that golden mean ratio optimizes phase conjugation, leads us to a phase conjugate model of attention consciousness itself, or a phase conjugate model of perception. And note that phase conjugate models of perception are not unique. Here we have one by Steve Lehar, showing that the self-correcting, self-organizing and centripetal nature of perception itself. And in fact, Bill, Don uh, I'm sorry, Bill Donovan, Bill Tiller, <laughs> famous physicist, showed in many ways in his famous book that in fact, focused human attention compresses electric fields, compresses charge, is electrically centripetal. We're the first to explain why and how that works. So what we suggest is not only the right and left hemispheres golden ratio, but they're 180 degrees out of phase and longitudinal. And that's how you get the famous flame in the mind phenomenon. Uh, as, and actually, I learned more about this from Bill next to me here, that Ingo Swan uh, <laughs> was uh, um, able to make a heat a thermistor at a distance with his mind replicably, and in fact, he did it through a grounded metal screen, meaning the only cage, yeah, a Faraday, yes, yeah. The, yeah, and so that means that effectively the only way he could have done that was to uh, 
Use What's a, interferometry? The interferometry yeah. of a longitudinal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the brain waves must be making a longitudinal wave. And so here's the ways we model the geometrics of that, that actually consciousness, life force, perception, all these forces are centripetal, like gravity itself. And so we have all these uh, slides on phase concrete model of consciousness. And here we're going to our work on the EKG, which also we know that fractality in the heart is the heart of the issue. And my invention, the heart tuner, uh, goldenmean.info slash heart tuner special, you see that we pioneered this first measurement of internal coherence in the heart as heart coherence with this, you see the septstrom in the center of the screen there, which um, is now available very inexpensively, heartsring.com for the, your iPhone, iPad, iPod, which is simply a way of measuring empathy and heart coherence, phase entrainment, with breath training, breath training biofeedback on your iPhone, iPad. So check out heartsring.com for the latest in heart coherence. So this was the original central hypothesis we began our work with, which was that Golden ratio perfected phase conjugation is the electrical origin, cause, and mechanism of all centripetal and self-organizing forces. Gravity, life force, perception, bliss, and enlightenment. Actually, origin of alphabet, and more than we can cover in this conversation. But you're going to see that applied to capacitance making centripetal phase conjugate structures. So we call that phi recursion induced charge acceleration implosion solution, phi recase, and we applied that to being a solution to infinite collapse, non-destructive collapse, which even Einstein himself said was the solution to gravity. And we're about to see that that is also the solution to making phase conjugate dielectric implosive capacitance to cohere the vacuum parallel to Tesla's charge shuttle oscillator, which Bill may speak about. We have, yeah, we have the Tesla wizard Bills here. And so I'm going to go through these slides quickly because I want to give time for Bill. So this is the background, and we've been teaching this implosion physics for many years. Goldenmean.info is the central website. The essential hypothesis, the pine cone we know gets about 4 to 12 millivolts from gravity like a chicken egg because it's implosive phase conjugate and fractal and electrically centripetal. And so you can build a capacitor to do that, a phase conjugate dielectric capacitor. The dielectric quality is the issue to make life force. And we're going to actually prove that as we solve the energy crisis with our new and confidential group in Brazil, which their lab there now, down in Brazil, they have solved the problem, which is to say to make a capacitor which coheres the vacuum. And you will be hearing more about that, but we're not at liberty to tell much about that in this conversation. So how the phase conjugate dielectric directly imitates how consciousness behaves because we know from the paper Allison Barium Titanate Land that in fact phase conjugate fields find each other remotely at a distance in an apparently self-organizing way. And so this is kind of the holy grail of uh, non-destructive collapse, uh, nuclear fusion, uh, you know, because when you have phase conjugate longitudinal microwave creating remote heating at distance, you solve this problem of implosive collapse and controlling fusion at a distance. So this is the subject now. We're going to turn this over to Bill in a few minutes. He's going to be talking about phase conjugate supercapacitor, which is the conjugate one group confidentially in Brazil. And we already have success, or they have success down in Brazil. That's where they're doing this, where they actually are building the capacitors because mm -hmm. this, this is where it's happening. And this is related to Bill's genius talking what's called a permanent electric battery, that permanent electrics actually make a uh, current-free potential, which now we understand, thanks to Bill, how to tap the voltage on a permanently charged electric, like in your microphone or your furnace filter. And this relates also to how Schauberger originally taught implosion that when his water vortex began to spontaneously start getting colder was the moment it was going to begin getting voltage from gravity because the piezoelectric quality of that vortex would become phase conjugate and negentropic, which is to say get colder. I think at this point I'm going to turn this conversation over to Bill here. We're just switching the camera. Okay. So, Bill, I'm so. fascinated with many aspects of the application of Tesla here and mm -hmm. take, take it away. Okay, so anyway, uh, an electrode essentially is um, it's a permanently polarized material electrically the same way that a magnet is permanently polarized as well, uh, magnetically. So, and we've done a few of these and this is another one which is a, a it's a kind of a bipolar electrode and it uh, Works quite well. I mean, we've been testing. It's a super dielectric yeah. capacitor. Maybe you right. want to just explain a little bit why a super dielectric is inherently conjugate. 
okay. high high electric quality, like the ringing bells. Or yeah, you have to have something which is uh, highly organizing, uh, barium titanate, lithium niobate, and all that sort of thing. And what happens when you do have something like that? Um, there are several uh, references in the hard core scientific literature on this, uh, Prigogine and a few others, that uh, it becomes self-organizing. Negentropic. Yeah. Negentropic. And, you know, all this stuff is theory until you put it to, to use on the bench. And that's what's happened. In and when you do this, I and mean, you've got to do this, this is when you realize that, I mean, this is where the rubber hits the road. It's all theory until you do it on the bench. And... That's when you find out that, yes, this stuff is for real. I mean, you could put noise into the circuit and, and get a clean sine wave out, put square waves in, get sine waves out, and all this stuff. Self-organizing. Yeah, it's self-organizing. So and a super dielectric is like a bell that rings with more energy than the, than the hammer you hit it with, the quality right. of the ring. And it turns out that super dielectrics are the solution to your clothing and your house and living, right. living fields in general. Sorry. Right. So I mean, something about that size, I mean, it'll, it'll peak out of maybe about two watts or so. But uh, it's, it's really, it's a good, good demonstrator. Uh, Go hear the vacuum. It shows the theory. And you will not believe it, guys, until you do it on the bench. You've got to do it. So, anyway. So, um, Tesla turbine. Tesla turbine <laughs> and the amplifying transformer now. Yeah. Okay. So, you guys probably recognize what this one is. Okay, what this is, is it's essentially Tesla's pancake transformer. We tried it. And uh, I, uh, for those EEs out there, yes, the mass of the iron is too low. So For the conventional design. Right. So uh, we have to increase the mass of the iron, but yes, it does work. Uh, yes, it is over unity. How did he do it? Uh, he's essentially wound the primary as a capacitor. And the way you do it, and if you take a look at uh, where the wiring is coming out, it starts over here, ends over here. The plates are hooked up diametrically opposite each other so that instead of a sum zero B field, you have a vector sum B field. This B field, every time the capacitor charges, it will collapse onto the core. It collapses into the, the secondary over here, which is a, just a, a standard helically wound coil. I mean, it's, but the beauty of this thing is if you have the capacitance of the primary, which is just a big spiral wound capacitor, if you balance this one out with the inductance of your coil, Tune it. It's in self resonance. That's always the key. That's the key. <laughs> That's cool stuff. And if you hook these up together in a self resonant mode, now you've got the tertiary. The, this is your output. These two are ringing together. Uh, this is great, Bill, but we're going to run out of time. So okay. go ahead and show the Tesla turbine. Okay, toys. Tesla turbine yeah. next. Tesla turbine toys. Uh, okay, Bill, so Bill's operating a 3D printer here. We're very lucky. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Uh, Tesla turbine. This is something that I got off of uh, off of the net. So uh, that's the rotor. Very simple. That's the plastic model. We're right. building it in steel. You can see the gaps in there. Hmm. So uh, the the gas flows in or fluid this way. It's a uh, basically an impulsive spiral. Mm, maybe you want to show me and the way the then, end caps. Right. Those yeah. are the end caps. Yeah. You and can see where the exhaust ports are. And uh, we're assembling this in metal here, and, right. and Bill has a larger version to show you. Maybe to mention the essential point was the efficiency with which uh, torque is converted to, or no. Right, right. Now, uh, normal turbines are around 30% efficient. Tesla turbines, uh, according to Tesla's original writings, can start out at 60, but he actually had devices that ran up to 80 to 90 percent efficient. This is converting steam or right. air pressure to By torque. using a hollow shaft design. Yeah. Because remember, the amount of energy that is imparted to the blades is directly proportional to the area and uh, to the amount of momentum transferred. So There's basically a spiral vortex right. going on. In this there. one, you can see that it's maybe about 60% efficient because the, where the exit ports are, and these are the exit ports over here, if you put it in the, the shaft itself, you get a much higher efficiency. And, and that's that, what you have to do. And Bill has a bigger one to show you, right, Bill? Right, okay, so... Here, here's the larger version there. This is the larger version. Ugh. <laughs> so you can see that it's minus the shaft. And again, it's a tangential inlet. 
Uh, and uh, this, of course, is the, the exhaust port. And you have a sample rotor plate there right. to show them, don't and you? And the rotor plate over here, yeah, extremely simple. From the inside of there. And uh, unfortunately, you'd have to have your own shop to build it, but... And Bill built amazing uh, drill guides and all the stuff to make that stuff. He's been very ambitious. We're very tickled in pink. I am. Yeah, yeah I have some new toys. So, so <laughs> did you want to talk about the charge shuttle oscillator parallel here? Right, the okay. Uh, the, the charge shuttle oscillator that Tesla had is also a system. It, it's based on asymmetric systems. You have to have, a, in many ways of extracting energy, the energy flows from a higher potential to a lower potential. It can also move from... Uh, stationary to motional or motional to stationary. So if you have something which appears to be motional and that means that uh, for example the same is true in an electric induction motor then what happens is that uh, it uh, either drags the magnetic core along uh, with the eddy currents in the case of an electric motor or in the case of uh, the charge shuttle oscillator uh, it's like the it's like the lights on a marquee. I mean, they, they turn on and off, but they appear to be moving. So you can do this with electric charges. When you do this with electric charges in Tesla's charge shuttle oscillator, you can actually extract energy that way. It's like, you know, a, a three-phase motor has the illusion of rotation from phase shift. But mm -hmm. if you did that in a line... If you did that in a line, you know, in a motor, you get a linear electric motor, a linear mm -hmm. induction motor, but with... The electric stuff, what you get in a, a rotary version is either the ML converter of the maternity community in Switzerland, or uh, you do this with a solid state version, segmented plates, that sort of thing. And uh, it also gets into, you know, the electrets, uh, that sort of thing. But what happens is that you uh, have on one side, you will have a DC potential, and you have... Um, leakage potential with that. I mean, you can go up as high as we want, 20 kV. And then on the other side, you have a rotating disc. Okay, the rotating disc is uh, pro producing a frequency component. So uh, the stationary side just sees the, um, the leakage current, well, 5 watts maximum. Okay, the, the rotating side sees this, uh, sees capacitive reactants. So the capacitive reactants now can drive real things and, um, the, the, and the, 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 it's a myth that you can't drive things with capacitive reactants a current is current you know, uh, as long as it's not a negative current so uh, you can do that and now what happens is that the faster the disk spins the higher the frequency uh, 1 over 2 pi fc and that means that what you're going to wind up having is uh, a, high, a, a low capacitive reactance on the plates and the moving side and an infinite capacitive reactance on the stationary side. So this means that you're going to wind up with uh, a large proportion of current flowing on the motional side versus the non-motional side. Simple stuff. I mean, you could do this in solid state. You could do this... Uh, it's, we want to draw yeah. the parallel to how uh, all forms of uh, fields that are phase conjugate, negentropic, centripetal, become self-organizing, like life, consciousness, mind, the flame in the mind, and all devices essentially which cohere the vacuum. So any of these devices which generate this uh, electrical relationship which allows the pump wave to converge and become negentropic and self-organizing, not only is the solution to our energy crisis, and you're going to be seeing more about the Conjugate One project in Brazil, it's, it's very dramatic the way these uh, capacitive devices cohere the vacuum, but now we apply that to, for example, lifeforceclothing.com, that the quality of the dielectric around your body is how you get to become charged, self-charging like the battery is. And then you apply that to architecture, goldenme.info slash architecture, you get the picture. So sorry, we don't have a lot of time right now. This is a short presentation, a short intro. We're delighted that Jason is there and representing us in the States. Thank you, Jason. And thank you for the wonderful people at the Tesla conference. And more information at some of the websites we mentioned, goldenmean.info, fractalfield.com, uh, the implosion group, breakthrough-technologies.com. So thank you very much, and we're happy to entertain questions at your convenience. Take care.